Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad taste in music, and today we're looking at the most beautiful songs, part two. There were so many requests, there are so many incredible tracks here, uh, that it would be impossible to just make one video, because there's so many different requests with tons of likes that, oh, that I didn't get to yet, so that's what we're doing today. We are going to be looking at some more, so if you didn't watch the first part, it's brand new, alright, just go to the channel, alright, if you're watching this in the future, there should be the link down below, I'm just kidding, that requires effort. Alright. Let's go. Roads by Portishead is absolutely stunt. Wait a minute, this was in the greatest songs video. Should I just skip over this? Eh, still pretty good. Let's let's play it anyways. Just ignore that Tom McDonald search in the search bar, you guys. All right, that was for research purposes. Yo, Tomas, thank you. But you see, how can it feel this wrong? Goosebumps. Oh my god. It's not the one I got a heart next to. It's probably like one of the. Oh, wait, no, I have this whole album downloaded. Yeah, it's a, it's a good album. Hey, it's a good album, alright? You feel guilty that you listened to a bunch of DJ Shadow and Massive Attack but never got into, uh, never got into Portishead? No reason to feel guilty about that. It just means you don't like women, all right? You know, there's many people out there just like you. I got nobody in my How did they upload this to Spotify? It's from 1994. They time traveled. There you go. This example is unbelievable. This song gets me shivering. All right, sure, it's probably in the greatest songs list, too. Yeah, 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 look, it deserves some more appreciation. This song is cold. It is cold beyond belief. A lot of people are saying, oh, this person just sounds like Bjork. To that I say, what? I mean, the song does kind of have that, you know, that chilling feeling that, like, Vespertine gives, but, you know, what, what's really nice about this genre in general is I feel like uh, th there's a lot of potential. In it, I haven't heard a whole lot of people fuck up trip hop. Then again, I haven't heard a lot of bad trip hop, but uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, it's pretty good. Good start. I'm feeling. Nostalgia critics, OK Computer, have you evolved from saying master of neo theater puppets and now you're saying nostalgia critics, OK Computer? Endlessly. Hey, speaking of speak of the devil, Venus is a boy. Uh, Bjork. The overall vibe of this song sounds like sailing through your thoughts as if they're clouds during a sunset. All the while thinking of someone you love. All right. I like to pronunciate Bjork with a hard J to accentuate my ignorance. <laughs> Not only is that a funny thing to do, but the way you described it too, with such such an understanding of that is uh, is quite quite brilliant in itself. Bjork. I think it's a good sign, the fact that this song is halfway through and I don't want it to end and I want to continue, uh, but unfortunately due to time troubles, uh, we can't do that. Smiley ball. I thought that was really infectious. It's surprising because this is, oh, wait, and my button doesn't work. Oh, it does work. Because this is like, you know, early Bjork before these huge, larger than life masterpieces. But this, I don't know, man, this is kind of up there. Hey, this shit kind of works pretty well. I'm not going to lie. I, I Thought it was a beautiful, really fantastic, smooth, and buttery song. Paul by Big Thief. Adrian Lenker sings the most beautiful, tender, and emotional performance I've ever heard uh, in a song to date. She has a voice that is difficult to describe until you've listened. The song itself is relatively short, but has a massive impact for me, not to mention the four-note uh, guitar solo, which somehow holds so much weight and raw emotion behind it. Honestly, this song is a masterpiece, and I highly recommend it for listeners of the Brad Army. Haha! -ha. Saw a TikTok of Rosalia live, and all the comments were like, Ew, what is this? And I just thought if Bjork did this, you'd be like, Yas, queen. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with people in general. 
this world is rotten. All right, that's what I say. This world is rotten. I'm pretty sure someone sent me in this before, and I was like, eh, I don't know. For some reason, though, it felt like every moment of that was kind of turning my blood into syrup, uh, slowing me down, and really, I felt like I was taking in every moment of that. Uh, fantastic track. Great example. Really, really good example. Wow, that was very pretty indeed. Nude by Ray... Oh my god, again with this crap. Look at this guy's name, Nucking Futs. That's that's how you know he's a Radiohead fan there, okay? <laughs> hey, look, it's Swans. You can't have a list like this without Swans, okay? It's an interesting one too. It's a piece of the sky, uh, the, a song by Swans off of the Seer, and this is I, I consider this and the song that follows to be uh, one singular album closer. Um, and this song is wild, and it's gonna be hard to. <laughs> It's, it's, it's an interesting one. I'll, I'll play it. I, 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 don't, I don't even know how to describe it. It has a melancholic and pretty feel to it, especially by the end when, uh, is it Gira? Gira? I don't even know how to say it. Not to mention the beautiful buildup uh, to the end is just as pretty, in my opinion. The song is as pretty as it gets, like a calm before the storm that is the next track. Uh, and not to mention the fact this song is 20 minutes <laughs> in common swans fashion. So sit back. Grab some popcorn, all right? See, we're crunched for time, but if Swan shows up, you know what I'm saying? Yo, you hear the way that rain, that frequency of rain? Yo, this shit, it's fucking 10 out of 10, dude. It's gonna rain! It's gonna rain! <laughs> Texture on this shit, okay? Write down some notes, Cardi. Are we actually listening to full songs? You didn't finish the four minute song by Bjork because of time constraints, but you wanted to listen to this in full? It's important, okay? Sorry, Swans is just prog rock for people with no friends. I'm sorry, but like, I don't know what prog rock you're listening to, but nobody who listens to prog rock can brag about having friends, all right? Pause. I'm kind of having the same thing you had while listening to Paul earlier, Brad. I kind of don't want this to end uh, and see what else is added in terms of layers and structures. This is great. See, you right there. Sitting right there, Antivirus UK, you're the reason I'm continuous. I'm continuing to play this entire song, all right? Everybody else, they could complain, but that one guy who's like, I get it, you know? That's what it is. All right, now the song finally starts. Only took 15 minutes. So, <laughs> here's the thing, is like, I understand people might listen to this and be like, pretentious slop, you know, uh, jerking off for 20 minutes. For me, what I like about this is, it feels like it, like, it was worth it to pay attention and I enjoyed the atmosphere thoroughly, but it also feels like music that reminds me why I do what I do. 
because sitting through this and even though it's not the most immediate like immediately satisfying thing in the world with rain and whatnot it gets me curious and i feel like uh, the like i've listened to this song a lot of times and every time i hear it i feel something a little bit different and it, it's one of the reasons why i absolutely love this song and this album so much is just that a uh, strange abstract flexibility with everything um for me i think it's great but I also would completely understand people saying this is the most long, drawn-out, boring garbage that's ever existed. Uh, for me, for me though, it, personally, I, I feel like it resonates. It's, yeah. I'm feeling... Yeah, I think this song is beautiful. I, I like the different layers. I like the different segments. Um, someone said that the build-up... They said that the build-up didn't immerse them in it. It wasn't immersive enough. To that, I say that that's... I feel the opposite. I feel like it puts in so much time to immerse you that it's kind of like, for me, impossible to step away as I want to understand the purpose and reasoning behind everything. And I feel like it just kind of adds this really heavy layer of context that makes you kind of even at some points overthink what you're hearing uh, well so that was the most that was exhausting i got to say so uh, unfortunately we're going to end the video there uh with that all right because i mean there are no prettier songs than that you know it only goes downhill from here um <laughs> uh we already did cocteau twins but i guess we'll do another one thanks for letting me have that and for not giving me a hard time for that to, you know, the five people who didn't give me a hard time for that. I Splink Luck by... by Cocteau Twins uh, feels like the warmth of the sun. It's heavenly with, uh, with or without reading the lyrics. Most of their songs sound like they're sung in a foreign language, making it a universal experience that's more about how it makes you feel. That being said, their lyrics use the sweetest, most poetic wordplay, Elizabeth Fraser. We got Elizabeth Fraser again, of course. Truly sings from a place that sounds like of a higher power. As someone who has battled depression since they were a child, this song makes me feel spiritual in a way that, uh, that, there's, almost, that there's always a light beyond us and within us. Wow, that's really optimistic about this sad existence we live in. Oh yeah, it's off this album again. Wow, this is really good, but unfortunately we don't really have any time. We're kind of on short time, so we're gonna have to skip over this one, but I do like what I'm hearing. Anyways, uh... I Splink Luck, I think the effects are a little bit weird and I'm kind of struggling to get into this one, so for me personally, eh, I'd like the other example better. Shrug. It's okay, this next one will play out the entire thing, alright? I swear, we'll play out this entire next one and you guys are gonna like this one. Any Fleet Foxes song could be here, but Helplessness Blues is by far the best example. The simple instrumentation in the first half worked to create a foundation for Robin's vivid poetry and beautiful voice. Then the second half creates an entirely different yet gorgeous color palette. Uh, all the way to the last few all the way to the last few words. Uh, such hopeful emotion, such strong work of art. So, I'm telling you, all right, we're gonna play this one out. I, I, you know, I fuck with this one. I like this one. One of the best folk songs of all time. I, I, I mean, I can't disagree. This shit's... I was a functioning cog in some great machinery. But I don't, I don't know. You did not just say Mumford and Sons. Come on, man. Soon you will see. Help this, this blues. Why should I wait for anyone else? Whoa, 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 wait, why are we selling Brad coin? Wait, what's going on here? Wait, why are we selling Brad coin? What did I do? Hey! Hey, take it, take that back. Hey, don't do that, all right? There's not, no, what's, what's going on here? Hey, hey, whoa, hey, oh, no, 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 don't sell Brad coin. Hey, it's not a scam, I swear to God, officer. Whoa, hey, I've been framed. I've been framed. Listen, hey, this is, this is, a, this is preposterous, all right? Hold my look. No, don't you- why'd you sell all your brag coin? Guys, this- this is a tra- travesty! Tragedy! Now 
Now, see, I like it less because of Brad singing, Hey, hey, hey! Anyways, um, see, this song doesn't need to be 20 minutes to be perfect. I'm feeling... Holy shit, the emotional turmoil that goes on in this song, the, the desperate feeling of this whole track, I mean... It's it's perfect. It's perfect. The the instrumental, the Mumford and Sons feature, okay? Stream portals even. Weird Fishes slash Arpeggi by Radiohead is by far one of the most beautiful songs I've heard. The way this song just lets you drift away with the guitars uh, working in complete harmony while Tom York's voice guides you along, plus the ending is phenomenal. It's like a whole movie all in one song. This is, uh, the only song that's entranced me in this way. Simply amazing. March. Oh, yes, uh, I was asked a question, will I ever do Brad Army merch? If I do merch, I'm gonna commission, uh, Riley, uh, Hive Mind Riley to, to do designs and shit, you know, so the money's flowing into the community in that way, so, yeah, that would be pretty lit. Love to love to get him involved in that. And if anyone's thinking I'm just taking a shot in the dark, I've I've talked with him about it. I just got to give him all the ideas. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, it's. You don't buy the merch in a traditional way. You have to actually pay me $9 a minute uh, whenever you wear the merch. That's right. And you can only buy it with Brad coin. There you go. So here's the thing. I've covered this song about a thousand times, so for that reason, I'm not going to continue playing it, but I do think that this song is possibly the best song in Rainbows. I'm feeling... I, I know. Okay. Well, luckily with chat being dead, they're not going to interject with me skipping this song, so I'm going to do that before they come back. Hey, don't, 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 don't sell Brad Coyne. No, 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 no. Three Libras, a perfect circle, a beautiful, beautiful composition, a structured uh, paired with Maynard's soft voice, almost a kind of beautiful sadness with the lyrics being as meaningful as they are. I might have heard this song. I spent nine dollars and all I got was a shrug in this t-shirt. A perfect cock ring. <laughs> Is Riley's death a hoax? What the fuck? Stylistically, I don't care for this song. I feel like Maynard's voice is pretty and impactful as always, but for some reason, this song just isn't all that touching. Like, I don't know. It feels like I should care more than I do, but I think it's just that alternative rock style uh, that I just don't really care for with this. You know, it just kind of seems like a more palatable version of what I enjoy from Tool. We die together. Pennsylvania Furnace by Lingua Ignota. Christian, uh, Christian Hader's vocal delivery is absolutely perfect, uh, both in terms of technicality and emotion. This coupled with a beautifully paced buildup from the instrumentals, uh, it creates an experience that never fails to get me choked up. And all of this comes without even mentioning the sheer gravity of the subject matter uh, with Alexis Marshall. So, yeah. Uh, all that information definitely made, uh, I feel like, Lingua Ignota's music even more punchy, for sure. Um, but I also feel like it's amazing on its own, and I don't think that it's all... Thanks to Alexa, uh, Alexa's, uh, you know, actions. Oh, we die Everything and the dog we die. There's ah, and the, and the way it comes back to it's disgusting. It's a strong nine. 
Oh my god. The, ah! So, for me, the only thing I have is that the pacing of this one, funny enough, is just a little too slow for my own, t you know, for, for my own taste. But that's, that's about it. Like, I, I, there are other Lingua Ignota songs I like a little bit better, but it's still up there. Just the, the way that everything synergizes, that second half is unbelievable. And I think this is a perfect song for this video. And not a lot of people, I feel like, have listened to Lingua Ignota. So if you... Hey, that, I don't... I, what the, come on! You're selling brag coin over that? Brad, listen to this song I committed. I commented it's literally perfect. That's not how this works. You know how many people have been waiting? Like this guy. Digital Bath by uh, Deftones. Everything about this song is amazing. Well, White Pony isn't my favorite Deftones album. It is undoubtedly one of their best. Chino's, uh, Chino's vocal performance is heavenly, and the final chorus before the ending of the song sounds like I'm ascending. On top of that, the crisp production is phenomenal, and the ghostly but soft ambience makes this song sound incredibly ethereal. <laughs> oh. Talking all that bullshit! I feel like White Pony was a really amazing step for Deftones in terms of like where they were and what they wanted to end up do, uh, doing. And I feel like Digital Bath is kind of that more beautiful sound that they'd eventually develop even further. Um, but again, I think it's amazing here and I think that they struck a fantastic balance. It's a good example. It's a smiley bowl for me. I don't think it's like my favorite example of the day, but I think that it's still a very uh, grand and... You know, it's a pretty song, but I feel like when I listen to this, pretty isn't like the word that, that describes it the most for me. But it is still very pretty. Couldn't really hear what they were saying. Bro, like, the the lyrics literally were on screen the entire time, and they scrolled along, and you could read along with every single line. That is not an excuse anymore. Unless you don't, like, you can't read English. Brad, some people are blind, don't be ableist. Yeah, if they're blind, why are they listening to music, Okay. Makes no sense to me. Soundtracks for the blind. Uh, well, I mean, that's different, obviously. <music> Down at the Aiden by uh, Ichiko Aoba is pretty to the point that it hurts. I feel like she's channeling the beauty of the entire world in an, uh, and it is unapologetically overwhelming. The live version of 12 Ensemble and Mil uh, Milton Court is amazing. And what is that, spine tingling? Am I blind? I can't understand the lyrics. No, you're just stupid. You listen to this and you think of Hey There, Delilah? Bro. DJ Khaled! Ain't no type of dope shit. But that's not even the bad part. They're not even saying words anymore. They just got a hard ass fucking. No, Hobson. Beat. No, Hobson. That's racist. That's the second time. Yeah, this song kind of feels like just being in heaven. Honestly, this is kind of the perfect example of what I'm looking for. You want a pretty song? There you go. There's your pretty song. <laughs> this is a smiley ball for me. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say the examples get more, uh, like, like I feel like, uh, what, to the point than that, so. Empire Ants by Gorillaz. It's hard to explain, but wait, was this the greatest song of all time? Probably. I don't know. Something about the song makes me feel emotionally overwhelmed and covered it at the same time. The lyrics about the world ending uh, being sung like a gentle lullaby gives it this nostalgic yet sad feeling. And the transition between the beachy sounds of the first half and the since in the second half is incredible. App so lutely damon little dragon's vocals are phenomenal. They really add to the somber calming vibe. The song never fails to leave me a little teary eyed. Yeah, this song is very pretty and also extremely effective in the way it goes about it. Both sides of the instrumental being spectacular. DJ Khaled! I'm sorry, I can't help it! Sorry, I've heard this song so many times. <laughs> no
Yeah, I've heard the song like a billion times. One of the reasons for that, it was the first song on my stream, uh, my old stream playlist. In fact, I think I heard it so much I just took it off the the new one. Um, doesn't take away from the fact that I think it's one of a kind, and it brought me back to this nostalgia that is like buried deep in my soul. You know, there's all these emotions that aren't really ready to ever come up again. Uh, and for that reason, I'm feeling the red headphones. Dog. Kawaii, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that someone hasn't timed you out yet. Clearly, I have not given you the attention that you are begging for. So, that usually, you know, most normal people would stop. Uh, breaking news, Brad Coin is at an all-time low and dying. Fake news! Hey, hey, hey! When the sun hits by slow dive, definitely, there's, oh my god. When, when the sun hits by slow dive definitely comes to mind when I think of pretty songs. The guitars create a buildup uh, while Neil's somber vocal lead vocals or vocals lead the track to an amazing and heavy chorus. The song deals with the fear of not only losing a partner but losing oneself in the process. Wait a minute, it's this song, isn't it? Isn't this that one song? Oh, it is. Yeah. My Bloody Valentine is better, in my opinion. Oh, significantly. Found this album on the street with my girlfriend once. What, you mean like you found it and you found your girlfriend both on the street? Also, that's basically where this album belongs. Dog Reborn, Kids See Ghosts. I think this track uh, will and already has made its mark on the music scene along with the entire album for having a focus on mental struggles and battles. Personally, this song has helped me realize my depression and anxiety can't last forever and the repeating message of just keep moving forward is so strong it brings me to tears knowing that everything bad happening right now will eventually pass. And not letting yourself get caught up in mistakes you've made or people you've lost in the past. This is, this is beautiful, what you've said here. I appreciate this. Oh, ignore that heart next to it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Young Mula, baby! DJ Khaled! So I'm so reborn for King Mula. This artwork, though, is like 10 out of 10 artwork. I mean, this is one of the best artworks of any album I've ever seen, you know? Uh, which, if you'll notice, the, the pictures, same artist, uh, Murakami. All the rain, I want all the pain. I want all the smoke. I want all the blame. I still have my Murakami. Here, I'll show this for the video. Like, what do I do with these? You know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta find. I gotta find a place to hang them. You know? Oh wow, that literally circles. Yeah. But I have the other one too. But I just don't want to take it out of the box. So Brad coin. What? You don't even want to know how much that shit cost. Was. I've overpaid for sure. Did you buy it on? Uh, yeah, I bought it in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Exclamation point art for the full lore. Keep moving forward. Oh, yeah. Anyways, good song. Smile the ball. Hidden Place by Bjork is the immediate answer for me. Every time I listen to it, I get an out-of-body uh, experience, and it feels like I've ascended to a whole new level of bliss. The grand instrumentation and Bjork's vocal manipulation play a key in part in making this song so enjoyable for me. I'm not sure as I can't read the lyrics. I don't speak Icelandic. Shut the fuck up. Yo, we have Melanie Martinez at home. You're absolutely right. I feel like this is just a ripoff of Melanie Martinez. I I was enjoying the song until you said that, and all of a sudden, the illusion is broken. Terrible oh. song. Awful example. All Apologies by Nirvana is uh, so pretty, especially the MTV Unplugged version with its emotional and strong performance from Kurt, and it being one of the last times uh, Kurt played live, it had even more emotional weight. I'm going to play just the recorded version, uh, as that's the one I'm the most familiar with. But yeah, this is a fantastic example. Fuck all you hoes! Detroit till I die, motherfucker! 
I absolutely love how this album's recorded, by the way. Everyone is gay. That's not. I'm not gay. I have a video saying I'm not gay. Okay, this guys, I'm not gay. I, I'm not gay. Tom McDonald type writing. People tell me every day, hey Bradley, I want you to listen to my work. I put so much time and I put so much effort into this. Listen, all right? And here's the problem and a reason why I've given up hope on humanity in general, all right? This is music that is born through so much pain, so much pain, that it is something that can't just be curated. It's something that you got to really live through to be able to just put this through, to put this out. You know what I mean? And I feel like being chronically online really turns people's brains into mush and makes it impossible for them to create something good, uh, create something great even. Uh, in other words, this is beauty built from pain that is untouchable. I'm feeling... Good music is almost always born from trauma. I don't think it's almost always born from trauma, but I definitely feel like, uh, you know, things that m force you to mature and force you to kind of grow into your own and build your own personality, discover yourself, I feel like are, they, they don't hurt when it comes to creating music, all right? Being chronically online can have a very painful, very effective source of pain. Of course! But, I feel like there also needs to be something else. For example, being trans and chronically online, alright? You, you see where I'm going at here, alright? I'm telling you, all the good internet musicians, trans. I'm just, or, or in some way, have gone through like some uh, gender euphoria trauma, right? It's true. It's true. And on is on we are. Buy Bradcoin. Lately I've been hard to reach. I've been too you should give Beautiful by Eminem a listen. Playing it right now. Oh yeah, I saw. Wait, were you the one who left that comment? I'll tell you what. Why not? I feel like it would be an interesting discussion piece. Doesn't mean it's time for you guys to comment yours. This is one I was already thinking of. All right. And it's not because I think it's the best example ever, but it is called Beautiful, and it is by Eminem, and it is off of Relapse, and I think it's a fascinating one to play regardless. Lately I've been hard to reach. DJ Khaled! I'm just so fucking depressed, I just can't seem to get out this slump. Why a win, I ended up Dude, same. It's literally, it's been so long since I've heard this song, I don't even know how to feel about it. That's what's so funny, is because I, I, I used to listen to Relapse a lot as a kid. So now I, I'm hearing it again, I'm like, wait a second, what the fuck? I'm listening to this again? This position I'm in, I'm starting to feel distant again. Nostalgic critic on production. Dude, oh yeah. Okay, listen. Back in the days of Roblox trading, you used to have to click on someone's profile to send them trades. For some reason, I, do, I never forgot this. Someone, there, you could have like a bio, and their bio was like lyrics from this song as like, to like define their personality or some shit. And I feel like that was so fitting to me. I was like, oh yeah. That's the, it's the, it makes perfect sense, you know? Follow me around and wipe my ass, laugh at every yeah, that's the other thing about this though, is I think it's aged poorly specifically because the wave that Eminem created is just sludge. Like, I feel like what he is, like, cause here, this is like born out of like, he was in like, what is possibly the lowest point of his entire life. You know, he's uh, essentially rich and sad. You know, he's, he, he's made it. He's sold millions of records, but then he became a drug addict and disappeared from the thing that he loved, which is his art. And this is like a reflection of that. And it's not as lyrical. It's not as like everything is rhyming and hibbity dibbity hibbity skibbity hip hop. Um, but you know, it, it, it gets the point across. So, I, I mean, I actually do understand this example. Single joke got crack and half of them ain't even funny like that. How do you vibe with this and not NF? Nostalgia, essentially. Also, NF is fake as shit. <laughs> His entire thing is flaunting, but like... 
It sounds so fucking ridiculous. The emotional songs work for him, but when it, when it's flexing, man, it comes off like total and utter bullshit. What would you rate the Slim Shady LP? Probably like a five or a six. It used to be much higher for me, but I, I just the sound, the references, a lot of it is just aged really horrifically. I mean, realistically, it's like, do I like this song all that much? Not really. It, it's something that I just don't really care for that much anymore, but I also feel like, regardless, this album is still a very interesting point in Eminem's career, and I'm always going to respect it for uh, being that, but I personally think that out of all the examples so far, uh, this one, unless you, like, really perfectly resonate with his story, uh, isn't really going to be one that I'd say, like, go and seek out. Don't let him say you are gay. Whoa, whoa, tell Kurt Cobain he's lying to you. Whoa. It's true. The Cranberries with Linger, easily one of the greatest songs of the 90s. It has a very lovely, breezy feel to it, and the strings uh, and Dolores' vocals complement each other beautifully. The vocals in particular are, are incredibly captivating, and Dolores' uh, unique limerick accent adds to uh, adds an extra level of warmth. I'm finding it really hard to describe. I just love this song to bits. In life, there's people that hustle. DJ! DJ Kevin! You know, despite me fucking around with this song uh, a bunch while listening to it, I've never actually heard the song. And if I have, I've forgotten about it. Uh, yeah, this is remarkable. <laughs> I think it's extremely pretty. I think the vocals are uh, very intimate, feel very real, and the writing is incredible as well. Instrumental, everything about this is pillowy. Smiley ball! That's, that shit's great! Between the Bars by Elliot Smith, absolutely heartbreaking, but Elliot's voice and the simple acoustic instrumental is just so gorgeous. Elliot was such an amazing talent, gone far too soon. The songwriting here is just incredible. Glad we have some Elliot on this list. Oh yeah, that's the thing, is I'm not crazy about Elliot Smith, but this is actually like the one song where it's like all clicked for me, funny enough. And it's the one that sounds the most like just a lullaby. Um, yeah, this is a fantastic track. <laughs> And in singer-songwriter fashion, the way that it just kind of ends here, I think, is also fantastic, too. Just sort of letting the song just end, in a way. And it makes it feel even more intimate. Um, again, not the biggest Elliot Smith fan, but, like... I'm feeling... Okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard to argue with that one. I, I think it's kind of like the perfect folk song, in a way. <laughs> The <laughs> perfect singer-songwriter track. So, you know, it's got that going for it. Mersbo, Woodpecker number one. One of the most gorgeous pieces of art I've ever heard. To this day, I haven't heard anything that has topped the sounds of that song, mostly because I can't hear anymore. This is a trigger warning to anyone who has a pair of ears. Genuinely, though. Like, seriously. Like, actually, though. This, if you want to turn back, this, this is a good t Like, this is your last warning. Like, seriously. Mute the fucking stream. Like, I will not be playing more than, like, 30 seconds of this. Gorgeous. To me, it's definitely just the two of us by Bill Withers and Groover Washington Jr. There's just something so soft and magical about it. All right, let's play. Hold on a second. Hold on. There we go. I see the crypto raindrops fall and the beauty of it all. Bill Squithers. Hey. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try to bend 
the sky, just the two of us. Thanks, Brad. Song ruined. You're welcome. Good example, though. I think it's amazing. <laughs> We're not showing the real song, though. Don't Fear the Reaper is the most beautiful, meaningful, and life-changing song I've ever heard. The fear of death, whether it be uh, your own or a loved one, is something that uh, uh, that's a part of all of us. And I've never heard a song do a better job at being so reassuring and comforting while tackling the topic of morality. It's like you, the listener, are on your deathbed while the song is holding your hands, telling you it's all going to be okay as you pass on. Truly uh, what, the most beautiful and passionate song I've ever heard. Oh! One time I was making a song and it was missing something, I listened to this and immediately added a cowbell. Nah, dude. <laughs> nah, I don't know about that one. Sell cowbell coin. <laughs> See, I'll tell you right now what's so funny is this song is so calming, it's so pretty, that I had no fucking idea uh, that it was about death until now. So, good example, Smiley Ball. I never really paid attention to this song. Now I'm like, oh shit, would you look at that? My pick would personally be It's Okay to Cry by Sophie. The way this song progresses and she grows more and more passionate. Moved me to tears the first time I heard it. Rest in peace, the queen. This is an amazing example. I'm really happy that this example is here. And I'm very happy to share this with you guys. Because this is one that I feel like is a lot more obscure in terms of the sound and style. Um, but is every part uh, as worthy of being here as any other song. So, absolutely. So I really like this track. I feel like it's one of a kind. Um, I, like that's the thing. It's like as someone who like looks for experiences. Yeah, I think that this song is is in my personal opinion one of a kind. Nutshell by Alice in Chains, lyrically brief, but at the same time very raw and honest. A very heartfelt song about someone who's already gave up on life a long time ago. I think I heard this recently. Is this off of um, Jar of Flies? Because if it is, yeah, I agree. This song is insane. Uh... Gotta love the varied taste in your comments. Hell yeah. That, hey, that's a... I appreciate that. Yo, is that DJ Khaled on guitar? Yeah, I so many roadblocks. To be honest with you, I see nobody. I am the best. Chase me, spread a lies. No place to go home. Yet I find repeating in my head. For me, this is the... And again, it's, it's hard to say, like, the best. But to me personally, this is... The Alice in Chains song that's hit me the hardest, the one that I feel like everything is lined up the most, and, and just my personal favorite Alice in Chains song, easily. I'm feeling. Okay. My, roots are... my roots are strong and deep by the microphones. I know this wouldn't be most people's pick off of the Glow Part 2, but something about this song has always stuck with me. The overblown piano just comes in and washes me over in a way that no other song has been able to replicate. Like most of the songs on this album, it feels like sitting in a snow-covered forest. The imagery that this song and many, many of uh, the others on this song, uh, on this album give are stunningly beautiful. You're right. Like, for me personally, this wouldn't be my first pick. Like, I have like f 15 first picks from this album. Um, but <laughs> you can't go wrong with this one either, as I feel like this song is gorgeous and certainly underrated from the project but yeah i mean as you can see I, I do like this album quite a bit maybe a little too much like headless horseman for example like that one i would probably pick that over this but still i mean this uh My Give everything a ten. 
<laughs> By the way, you can put this whole album on this. Oh, yeah, this whole album can be on this list. I agree. Any song from this album. Literally any song. Watch this. Oh, this song, for sure. Oh, yeah, this nine and a half minute song closer. Instrumental too? Oh, easily. The opener? Absolutely. Map? Yeah! As you can see, there's a lot of... <laughs> there's a lot of interesting shit that happens throughout this album. There's like a lot of repeating examples, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these examples, um, but not actually listen to them, so I'm just going to say... Talking Heads, this must be the place. This song has a delicate feel to it. All the band members swapped instruments, thus creating this naive effect. I find it incredibly calming. David Byrne's romantic non sequiturs are beautiful in a unique way of him expressing his feelings. Upon returning to the song, I feel relaxed and reassured every time. It feels so precious, I can't really explain it. The Great Gig in the Sky by Pink Floyd is a wonderful song about accepting death. The lyricless vocals are storming around the song. The singer's voice is just incredible, blending perfectly with that wild prog instrumental. For me, this song is a pure 10, really working as a cure for the song before it, Time. Milk by Sweet Trip, such a simple yet powerful song, stripping back the loud distortion and IDM drums from their previous album. Instead, having a track with just guitar and a light synth, it gives uh, it gives it a very heavenly feeling. Val's vocals are powerful and gorgeous, and the second chorus later in the song is probably the most gripping and beautiful thing I've ever heard in a song. 10 out of 10, need more groups like Sweet Trip, uh, minus the controversy, of course. <laughs> I Talk to the Wind by King Crimson is a perfect example. The flutes and shimmering qualities of the instrumental as a whole are so lovely and some of the prettiest music I've ever heard. Today by the Smashing Pumpkins. This song was written by Billy Corgan, the lead singer, who was going through the worst depression of his life when, uh, where he constantly fantasized about committing... Yeah. This song gives off that dark atmosphere through lyrics and its dreamy, angsty sound. Uh, it's a beautiful song that conveys hopelessness. On Melancholy Hill by Gorillaz, this one's a, uh, a 10 for me. Um, this song constantly... Uh, this song I constantly call my favorite song of all time, and I think it's very beautiful because of its tone. I think it perfectly encapsulates the feeling of the word melancholy. Uh, whenever this song comes on, I constantly feel... I consistently feel sad and reflect upon things that have passed in my life and where I am now. Every time it comes on, I feel melancholy without fail. I think a piece of art is something that makes you feel a, spe uh, that makes you feel a specific emotion. It's very beautiful and shows what music's really about, sharing ideas and feelings uh, to others about our experiences in this world. Candy Says by The Velvet Underground. Something about the fairly unique chord changes combined with the soft vocal delivery from Doug Ewell really resonates with me. The lyrics are all too relatable uh, for most people with anxiety or similar conditions. Candy Says, I'd like to know completely what others so discreetly talk about, and I hate the big decisions that cause endless uh, revisions in my mind. Isn't She Lovely is easily my pick for prettiest songs. Stevie Wonder is a virtuosic, one in a millennia talent. Isn't She Lovely is simply a song about the birth of his daughter and how happy he is to be a father. He has this incredible ability to take that happiness and burst it out into the song like a ray of positive energy. It's truly something special. Uh, edit, I just wanted to add that Songs in the Key of Life is one of the most important albums in musical history and you should absolutely listen to it. I do need to indeed listen to this one. Ladies and gentlemen, and that is... Part two of the prettiest songs in your guys' opinion, and some of my opinions, actually a lot of my opinions. Uh, but yeah, that is, uh, I mean, there are so many requests with this one that I kind of had to do a part two. Um, but that's not even still scratching the surface of what there is. Um, if you want to see the rest of them, I will link that down below for you to check out. Uh, and I highly suggest exploring some stuff, because the people here have some great, great taste, as you can tell by me giving fucking everything a 10 today. So, absolutely. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And peace out, everybody. Peace.